Okay, welcome everyone. Um, thank you for those of you who have uh, stuck around since the last session. Um, already, this has been a really wonderful day with a lot of interesting um, conversation. If you have not joined us on our Matrix channel, um, please do. That's at matrix.privacysafe.ai. Um, I see a lot of conversation is starting there. And also there's a public chat window, a little pane if you're on a desktop computer, and it's a little harder to pull up if you're on mobile. Um, but if you could please um, put your questions for Luis, for the next speaker, um, in that chat window, and I will moderate them and make sure that we talk about them. Okay, so Luis Falcone is a computer scientist, physician, and he's a free software activist. He's the founder of GNU Solidario, an organization focused on education and health. He's also the author of GNU Health, which is a health and hospital information management system. Um, extremely poignant, extremely important in this situation that we're dealing with with COVID-19. And uh, he's going to tell you all about it. So welcome. Thank you so much, Song, for having me here. And thank you, all of you. Um, around the world. First of all, my uh, heart goes to uh, everybody that's going through this terrible ordeal in the uh, United States, in Europe, Africa, Asia. Um, my talk today is going to be around uh, GNU Health and how we can use it uh, to help uh, governments in the fight against the COVID-19. Um, I will actually start by just giving a brief introduction of what its new health all about, and, and then we move into the um, you know some some specific areas on um, how to uh, work with this system in the COVID-19 context. Um, first of all, it's important to um, know that new health is a social project. Okay, it's first and foremost a social project with really cool technology, all free technology. Um, but the uh, main idea behind it is social medicine, and it's about public health. And it's about delivering freedom and equity in healthcare around the world. Um, we actually started the project in uh, 2008, and this picture that you're seeing is uh, one of the last um, congress we did here in Canary Islands in Spain, um, 2018, um, and we have people from all over the world, okay, from Gabon to um, Germany, the UK, United States, Brazil, Argentina, you name it, Greece. Um, but we all have the main goals here. Um, you know, uh, when, when we talk about um, public health, we have to keep in mind that it's a contradiction by itself um, using private software or proprietary software. Um, public health and health itself is a non-negotiable human right. So. Everything that is related to health itself should be free, as in freedom. Um, so, uh, in these slides, you see all the components, or most of the components that are related to new health. Um, all of them are free software, you know, from the database to the operating system to the uh, framework to the programming language, in this case, Python, to uh, the encryption engine and, and digital signatures and so on. Um, at the moment that if, if any of these chains or any of these components would not be free, the whole system would go down and collapse. So everything new health relies on free technology. And um, of course the people that work on our community we share the same philosophy of, of freedom and equity in, um, in healthcare. The ecosystem itself, it, it basically deals with four main layers, right? 
The very first and most important probably layer has to do with uh, the demographics and the social medicine concept, okay? Before, and we call these people before patients. Um, I usually say that if we have patients, we have probably done something wrong or we haven't done enough to avoid that person to become ill. So here we deal with you know, all the demographic information, the socioeconomic status, sex, gender, family members, contacts, um, domiciliary units, uh, how are those houses, how many people live in those houses, and so on. I will get into a little bit more of detail later on in this. Um, the second layer has to do with the traditional or typical electronic health record and that has to do with uh, the clinical history, genetics, uh, hospitalization, lab, uh, imaging, and so on. Uh, the the, the patient-doctor relationship. The third layer deals with management of the health institution itself. You know, finances, stock, human resources, pharmacies, um, um, providers, and so on. And finally, uh, we try to make sense of all the information that we have been collecting in these three underlying layers um, to provide useful data or useful information to the to the uh, health officials or the mini Ministry of Health, uh, and that has to do with reporting and analytics and so, and so on. Uh, New Health itself is an ecosystem, so it deals with different sub-projects uh, from the typical, uh, you know, health and hospital management system to have it on Raspberry PIs um, or other, as Song uh, uh, is working on his own um, uh, single board machines. We have uh, project dealing with uh, mobile uh, applications, uh, specific uh, project for laboratory information systems, and or projects for um, genetics and um, uh, genomics and clinical genetics and so on. So it's not just one single project; it's 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 an ecosystem, and depending on what you do on your institution, you will get one or the other. Some snapshots of what you can do, so there you have from histopathology to calendar into diagnostic imaging, um, newborn ring span, ring spans, uh, uh, reporting, and so on. Uh, this is another example of, of, of the beauty of free software. Uh, how we can actually integrate Orthanc, which is a, a, is a free uh, PAX server for you know MRIs and 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 uh, tomographies and, and all related to diagnostic imaging uh, that we can integrate it. We have a specific package for New Health, so all the studies done and series we can actually integrate it into one single uh, project. And as I said, you know, in part of the ecosystem, we we also deal with um, genomics uh, and clinical genetics. For example, here you can see uh, an example of all natural variants related to BRCA1 or breast cancer uh, one, the gene and all the um, natural variants or mutations that are related to to this uh, gene and can make you more susceptible to um, a specific type of, of breast cancer. So um, the New Health Federation allows to do large studies uh, nationwide or worldwide of, of, of integrating different uh, research institutions into different uh, type of studies. But again, you know, the, the, the DNA talking about the, um, the uh, genetics, 
uh, in the DNA of GNU Health is social medicine. That's, that's the key. Uh, we can build up to more sophisticated things, but uh, without social medicine, um, and I think that the COVID-19 pandemic has taught us that uh, no matter how powerful your country is, um, if you don't have a good public health system, you are going to go down into your knees, no matter ma how much money you have. Uh, and that's why we have to think about people before patients, always, if we want to have a, re a robust and scalable health system. Um, you know, WHO has said it, no one should get sick and die just because they are poor or because they cannot access the health services that they need. Um, this is key, this is key, and, and unfortunately, we see in many, many health systems that that is not the case. We see it in Europe, we see it in the United States. We really have to do much better um, in terms of public health and universal health care. You know, um, I know that the COVID is, is, is terrible, but we also have to think about what's the tragedy that many children around the world live every single day. Uh, just to have an idea, 20,000 20, children die every single day, every single day from social diseases. And those social diseases are, are diseases that are preventable and they are caused by humans and we have we have to have this type of causality and all these socioeconomic determinants of health present in every computer program that deals with health informatics if we don't have that in mind then we are not doing medicine we might be curing somebody at that moment but that's not doing medicine uh, that is um, very reductionist and that is reactive medicine. We see what's going on with the um, Navajo Nation in the United States. We see what's going on with people of colors in the United States. Um, whether you are black, whether you are Latino, uh, you are going to be uh, in much worse conditions generally because of the ethnicity and because of the socioeconomic status and because of the nutritional status that because of being specific ethnicity you are um, going to suffer from that and that is just not fair you know? so we we, we need this type of system to be a sort of eye-opener for our governments and say, hey, you know what, work on this and you're going to have a much better health system. And guess what? Um, you know, we, we are all animals. We are just one more species. And um, COVID-19, SARS, MERS, swine flu, Many, many zoonotic diseases have been the cause of all these epidemics, or in this case, pandemics. Um, you know, and we just have to stop this. We have to stop it. If we really want to do something that is sustainable, we have to be kind to all kinds. If we are not doing it, well, you know what? I think that nature has given us probably the last chance for the human uh, species, for the human race to be here. Um, and, and, and being empathetic to other species are going, is going to be key for our own survival. So we, we try to have this sort of integrative transdisciplinary approach to health um, where it's just not the molecular basis or the biological basis of disease but we also 
put their the other spheres as psychological and social and, and, and uh, that are as important as the biology, as your own biology. So housing conditions, work, family affection, nutrition status, education level, and so on, are all integrated into new health. So we have this idea of the person as the atom of the family and the society itself. So what can we do in the um, context of COVID-19? How can new health help in the context of um, the COVID-19 pandemic? Let's start by the demographics. So we have one of the elements that we have, or one of the models that we have is the domiciliary unit. This entity shows you uh, where is that uh, located, in which region, we call it operational sectors, it's linked to OpenStreetMap, a fantastic free software project also, uh, that allow us to georeferentiate uh, that house or that domiciliary unit in, in a map. Uh, whether you have the specific address or whether you are going to put the, uh, the uh, longitude and uh, latitude, you can actually georeferentiate that house. Now, that house has some properties like, uh, you know, the sanitary conditions. Do you have sewers? Do you have electricity? Um, how many members compose that house? And that is information in real time. So um, that's very important in terms of, for example, of contact tracing or overcrowding conditions, not just for COVID, but for many other infectious diseases like tuberculosis. Um, the more people that is living in that house, the um, higher the possibility of getting uh, uh, infected. The other things that we have is a list of all health institutions and health professionals across the country. Um, the health institutions, again, by region, that we call it operational sectors. Uh, what are the properties? How many beds? How many operating rooms? Um, uh, what is the occupancy, occupancy level of, of those uh, institutions? Who are the health professionals being there? What are the specialties? And so on. Um, we want to do also real-time demographic reporting. Um, here we're just showing, for example, uh, not just demographics, but we are also putting some uh, epidemiological information about what are the top diseases or, or health conditions um, distributed by um, age and by uh, sex, um, as well as the population pyramid, for example. And you can do many reports uh, on specific areas or, or, or other type of, of distribution. What is important here is, again, to have that information in place. If you have that information, then the reporting that you can do is it's, it's really up to you once you have the data in place. Um, Contact tracing, um, that's something that we'll talk here now. So, for example, you can do point of care uh, with new health, mobile, oh, I'm, I'm missing E on mobile, I, I'm, I'm seeing here, but anyways. Um, so, uh, you can have mobile stations um, where you can do rapid testing, uh, for example, for antibodies, and from there, you know, if, if the person it's already, um, you know, created uh, IgGs, then he passed the uh, disease and probably he can or she can go back to work. Or if she or he um, is going through the disease, um, then you do patient is isolation and initiate uh, contact tracing right away. Now, if you have uh, the data, the demographic data that I just talked about, where what else is the domiciliary units that this person is living, who are the contacts of this person uh, at war, at school, at that domiciliary unit itself, the family members and so on. All that information should be in place already. So it will be very easy to go and do uh, 
contact tracing in that case. So everything is it's coupled. Uh, in the case uh, that this person requires, you know, more extensive treatment, then um, you know we we go through the clinical management and probably hospitalization, where you are going to have. Um, kind of a control panel of that patient in front of you um, related not just to COVID but all the underlying conditions we know that people with underlying conditions probably are going to have a more severe um, course of, of, of the disease um, and from there you can do you know different testing like diagnostic imaging as I'm putting here uh, or other type of labs or if she requires intensive care uh, ventilators what type of ventilation she's going through and so on um, and again you know key is to have all the information that we have in a contextualized uh, way for that specific person and patient that will be much more or much richer than just saying, you know, COVID-19 or the ICD-10 code itself. Now, um, another important thing is uh, on New Health is the vital record system. In New Health, you can uh, create both birth certificates and death certificates. And, and the death certificate itself, it's very important from the medical, administrative, and epidemiologic uh, point of view. Um, so from here, we can say, well, you know what? Yes, the, 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 the person um, finally died of uh, an, an adult respiratory distress syndrome, but the underlying condition was, you know, a typical pneumonia, and she or he was positive for a... Uh, SARS-CoV-2, uh, so she she was uh, ill from uh, COVID-19, and, and all that information is on the death certificate itself. Um, you know, again, so if if we have all of this information in a federated nationwide system, um, that that's our proposed or our proposal to the government is please use something that is homogeneous around you know our countries we cannot have one autonomy dealing with a way of doing uh, reporting or 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 a way of um, you know filling up the uh, the uh, death certificate because that is going to impact uh, our reporting system and um, so uh, no matter where you are in the states or no matter where you are in Europe or in Asia at the moment that you are hospitalized and you are positive for COVID that will go nationwide and the Ministry of Health will know automatically one more case of COVID no matter where the state you are no matter where is the, your uh, geographical region and that is key and that's what we do with the um, New Health Federation. Uh, and of course, it must be free. It must be free software. We cannot have black boxes anymore. This is not about making money. Health is not about making money. Health is a non-negotiable human right. And, and we have to see it like that. And part of not seeing health the way it should have been envisioned is what have brought us to the pitiful state that the world is doing today because people or many governments and many politicians just think about money and that is creating a, an unsustainable way for humanity. Finally, let me just go through some projects around the world. We work in small clinics in the African rainforest 
to very large um, institutions like um, All India Institute of Medical Science. Um, this is a, the largest hospital in Asia, not just in India. Um, we work with uh, multilateral organizations like uh, WHO in different uh, projects and, and, and of course we adopt things like uh, the standards of ICD-10 or CPM. Um, United Nations University has adopted in you know, health. Jamaica as the whole country um, since 2013-2014 um, has uh, adopted GNU Health also nationwide. Red Cross, uh, Laos, also this, this is a public health uh, system. And we, we love to work with uh, academic uh, institutions. Uh, we have a program called the New Health Alliance of Academic and Research Institutions um, that allow us to cooperate with different uh, universities uh, around the globe. Um, and that has been very enriching for us. We learn a lot from, from different uh, universities. Uh, and, and finalizing my presentation, um, I, I usually always take this, this sentence from um, Rudolf Virchow. He was the uh, father of social medicine um, and, and, and also the father and example for, for me and many other uh, physicians like um, Allende or Dr. Carrillo. Uh, and, and he he basically says that, and, and I fully agree with this, that medicine is a social science. And, and we have to see it like that. And, and politics is nothing else but medicine on a large scale. Now, if politicians understand this concept, um, we, will more, we will move more towards all these socioeconomic determinants of health and disease. And yes, of course, big data and all this technology that we have is important. But if we try, and that's another problem, if we try to um, get rid of the, of, of the personal factor, of the human factor, towards the over-sophistication of medicine, we are in trouble. And that's what has happened. We have to go back to our roots. We have to go back to the human factor in something as important as medicine and thinking again as a social science and not as technology. We, of course, include technology, but we cannot forget that medicine is a social science. So with this, uh, I'm pretty much done. These are some of uh, the resources where you can get in touch with us. And um, I hope you do. And uh, let me uh, thank again Son and, or and the organizers of this great uh, conference and summit and um, for giving us the, the uh, spot for, for being here. So, um, thank you. Awesome. Thank awesome. you so much. Thank you, son. Um, um, so, so, I'm hearing a bit of a bit of a I'm going to try to ignore it. Uh, <laughs> so, um, one of the things I'm interested in from you is um, how GNU Health can be sort of an inventory system. Um, there are... Um, Organizations I know who have reached out to me or who I've seen in the news and so on that are having to handle uh, PPE for the first time. Um, so not necessarily hospitals or clinics or these types of organizations. Can GNU Health be something that maybe, you know, I don't know, a soup kitchen or some community group takes and, and will it help them to be able to deliver those kinds of um, equipment to the people who need it? Right. So, yeah, I mean, we, we have a, a, a package of uh, stock management. Um, so you can do inventory um, in pharmacies, for example, they use that a lot. So every product 
that has stock, not the service, that has stock, you can manage it and you can know uh, who's the provider, the supplier, uh, where is the warehouse, in which location of that warehouse is that, um, uh, that good, and how many items of that good itself do you have in every single location. So yes, the, the answer is yes, you can use New Health for stock management and inventory. Incredible. Um, and uh, as far as you know, your focus and GNU Health's focus, GNU Solidaria's focus on social medicine, um, obviously, I think a lot of folks are seeing this for sort of the first time. Um, I know even for me, um, who cared about healthcare, who cared about these issues, I didn't quite feel it until I'm now living it. Um, so have you seen more interest in the project because of COVID-19? And, and if so, how do you see that energy being directed? Absolutely. Uh, and, and you know what, I, I feel, I have mixed feelings about it because uh, at one, you know, at once it's like, well, you know, great. Now I'm, I'm going to be doing a hackathon or participating on a hackathon for the European community this weekend. I'm going to be having a talk on Japan again um, in a couple of days. And all related to this concept of COVID-19 and also because of the underlying conditions of, uh, you know, the, the socioeconomic and uh, underlying condition. Now, that is good, but on the other side, I feel a bit frustrated because this is something that we've been saying for almost 15 years already. And, um, you know, we didn't get much attention, especially from the North. I always said, you know, the South is teaching the North how to deal with uh, public health. And, um, but, you know, it's never too late. And, and if, if we have to get something good out of this tragedy, let be it, you know, and, 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 and I think that this is, uh, or, or the way or, or why I started this project was exactly that, to tackle the socioeconomic determinants of health and disease. And, you know, son, um, as I said, you know, the Navajo community, the black community, the Latino community, those are the guys that are suffering the most COVID-19, not only because of the virus itself, but also because of the living conditions that they have, the all, you know, if you look at the United States and you and you do a map and you say, okay, let me see what is the prevalence on diabetes, you will go and you will see that southeast getting red and red. And if you do cardiovascular disease epidemic, you will go again to the same southeast. And now if you... Um, you know, deal with overcrowding situation, you will go to the same place. So we have to tackle that before getting into more sophisticated. And, and, and uh, or if we don't do that, we are going to be repeating and going in a, in a, in a loop. So yeah, it's, it's, it's key that governments see primary care and social medicines as the very first step in the public health system. Awesome. I couldn't, couldn't agree more. Um, we have a couple of comments in the public chat, um, and uh, they're about specific implementations of uh, contact tracing. Um, so one of them that's being talked about is something called uh, Safe Path by MIT, uh, T-A-C-T, uh, contact tracing. Um, I know I'm personally skeptical about this. I think a lot of people are worried about the privacy of this. Two uh, sort of related questions. Um, the first one is, um, you know, what do you think of contact tracing? Is this something that would ever end up in GNU Health? And, um, you know, do you think it can be done in a privacy respecting way? And then the second question would be, um, do you think this question is coming up for a reason now? Is this a question that's come up in previous pandemics? Um, or is it something that's sort of unique to COVID-19? No, I think that it's contact tracing is it's key for, I mean, if you see, for example, tuberculosis, um, it's one of the uh, uh, paradigms on, on contact tracing. If, if a child or, 
results to have uh, positive on, on mycobacterium, you have to know which are the kids uh, in that classroom um, and whether this kid has brothers and sisters and what is the level of ventilation that you have in that domiciliary unit that I was talking about. So contact tracing uh, is, is, is key in, in uh, public health. Um, and New Health has the means of doing so. Now, um, you know, it, 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 at the end it comes down to legislation um, and how governments are going to be using that information. Uh, and of course, uh, people that or governments that don't respect human rights might be using it in, in a wrong way. Uh, but that's something that you know, it goes beyond our, uh, you know, we, we as physicians, we as uh, public health uh, officials uh, or workers, we do this for the public good. We do this to try to improve the health of our communities. Now, if somebody has, um, you know, other intentions, that's something that is up to each government. Um, and because it's free software, you can customize it. It's, you know, let me put you an example on, on, on new health and how much we respect privacy. Uh, we don't use Android or we don't use uh, iOS for developing our um, application on mobile devices. Um, because I don't think that they are safe. Um, in terms of privacy, we don't use Microsoft Windows or, or, or other non-free operating systems. I think that 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 if, if you have a closed source system, um, should never be used in uh, public health or private health whatsoever. It's it's um, it's antagonic, it, it just doesn't make sense, you know, you have to use, everything has to be transparent, and transparency is key in, in health. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't agree more. Um, I do um, sort of um, think we're moving into a world where contact tracing is going to become more complex and centralized. Um, so that's going to be, I'm sure, an issue. Um, I guess just to, to finish up on that, and we've had a couple of co comments about this as well and, and some private messages and so on. Um, how do you feel about a unique identifier or sort of a immunity passport, as some people are calling mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. um, and, and if something like that does happen, you know, how will GNU Health deal with that? Well, we have, uh, I know WHO is now working on this and we have implemented this personal unique ID uh, for the uh, New Health Federation for a couple of years already. That means that you can have an ID that is valid no matter where you are in the world. Um, and I think that that is a very positive thing. thing. Now, again, you know, you might argue, well, we know that there are some nasty governments around that, uh, you know, if, if they go into your demographics and your gender, uh, you might get in trouble going to those countries. And if they find out what are your gender preferences or, or, or you know, that would get you in trouble. But on the other hand, you have to think, that the problem is not the New Health Federation itself. The problem is that country. And the problem is that government. What you have to fix is that government, no a system of health that is going to give you the ability if you have a, a knee sprain in Canary Islands and tomorrow you go to New York, that doctor is going to have your clinical history updated in real time. And that is very important and very healthy itself. Um, we have to, you know, condemn what those governments or those countries are doing against, um, you know, human rights, not the ability of, of course, providing that I as a person or, as, of a, or, 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 or 
as a patient give the right to somebody to read my clinical history, which of course New Health gives you that that uh, chance. Um, but the problem is not uh, open science or open data. The problem is those governments that are doing the wrongdoing. Okay, and one last question, just to sort of build off uh, the comments you made about mobile platforms. Um, would you, or GNU Health, or GNU Solidaria, would you consider trying to implement um, software for hospitals on actual free systems, so GNU Linux on a phone? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, we are working with uh, Pine64 uh, uh, and KDE, we are joining forces with the KDE Plasma and Kirigami guys, um, and, and the next uh, mobile application of New, Go, uh, of New Health is going to be running on uh, Pine64 and PinePhones, which, which are GNU Linux uh, KDE uh, phones. So, so yes, that's, that's, that's our goal, you know, uh, and, and again, why? because we believe that that is the right way of doing um, health informatics. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Luis. So always uh, a pleasure and uh, really, really informative in this time period. We're very happy to have you uh, working for us. <laughs> um, and I hope uh, we can continue to bring these kinds of in-depth conversations um, to this summit uh, and talk very openly and seriously about the social implications of healthcare. So, Thank you so much, Song, for having me and a pleasure.